Hi, I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson here on behalf of the amazing DC Fan Channel to bring you a review and Easter eggs from Future Quest issue number two. Yes, yeah, so great. So welcome to the Hanna-Barbera Book Club and we'll launch right into this. Future Quest number two is an amazing pickup from issue one. In issue one, we had a lot of establishment of the characters and the themes that we were used to from the Johnny Quest comics previously and the different incarnations of their television show. Issue two brings you non-stop jam-packed right in in their action, we start on the planet of Amzot. We meet a ton of characters from the Herculoids, who I'm going to go into more in the Easter eggs, as a terrible, terrible thing is happening. Through the course of that, you learn exactly how Space Ghost came to fill in with Johnny and Haji. We see that scene from the very end of the last issue revealed in this issue in more depth. You get to see Johnny and Haji dealing with this, the implications of fear closing closer in on them, what this is going to mean when some other characters except for Space Ghost come through, and you get to see another great reveal on the final page. If this is going to be the paradigm going forward, if every final page of Future Quest is a reveal of a beloved or sometimes really scary Hanna-Barbera character, this is going to be amazing, guys. Jeff Parker killing it on narrative as always. Like I said, this is a more action jam-packed issue than the first one, but you still get a deep look inside the Future Quest world and you get a really good sense of just how far-reaching this book is going to be. Birdman fans out there, I got you. Space Ghost fans out there, I got you. Jason Jaina fans out there, I got you. They're all over the place. It is awesome, awesome, awesome. And the art, I mean, what could you want? Doc Shaner kills it doing this traditional throwback style that we know and love from the animated series. The characters are dynamic and the action is just, ugh, it just makes you want to just jump into the page and go right along with them. Of course, the material is fantastically, totally PG and could be disseminated amongst all of the members of your family, old, young, somewhere in between, male or female, or somewhere in between. Future Quest is an amazingly fun issue. It first Further is what we built on in issue one. It gives you a real sense of what is driving the book forward and you get to see all of your fan favorite characters. I cannot recommend this to you enough. All right, now let's move right into the Easter eggs. Let's start with Space Ghost, who we couldn't talk about last week because he was a really special reveal. Space Ghost was, of course, from a 1966 creation of Alex Toth. He reappeared in Space Stars and Space Ghost Coast to Coast on television and was rebooted into a serious hero by DC in the 2000s. The planet of Amzot is an Easter egg in and of itself. It is the Herculoid's homeworld in various incarnations throughout their history. Igu is the rock ape from the Herculoids who you see doing battle throughout the opening fight in this issue, accompanied by Thundro, who is, fun fact, a ten-legged, four-horned rhino triceratops who can shoot explosive rocks from his, uh, cannon horn on top of his head. I mean, how freaking cool is that, guys? They are joined by Xandor, who is the protector of Amzot and the leader of the Herculoids, as well as Tara, his wife, and the mother of Dorno, Xander and Tara's son, who, despite the fact that he is their child, calls them both by their first names because the Herculoids are cool and they just roll like that. They are also accompanied by Gleep and Glorp, protoplasmic creatures that can absorb and reflect energy blasts and laser beams. And these are the creatures that most people think of when they think of the Herculoids. They're gloopy and gleepy and they got bang eyes. Gl Gloop and Gleep, they're freaking, they're cool. They're my favorite Herculoids. I think they're your favorite Herculoids. Who doesn't love them? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Toward the middle of the fight, we meet Gravity Girl, who we talked about a little bit in our last review, who was a member of the Galaxy Trio and also known as the Princess of Gravitas. The Galaxy Trio, of course, being from Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, a cartoon created by the fabulous Alex Toth that was debuted on NBC on September 9th of 1967. Later on in this issue, we meet Jan, Jace, and Blip, uh, they are teen and monkey sidekicks to Space Ghost, and we get to see a classic move on Blip's behalf where he turns everybody invisible in order to hide from the fear agents. And speaking of fear, and that's F period, E period, A period, R period, they are a sinister organization and Birdman's number one enemy throughout his various television incarnations. Of course, I cannot say enough about Jeff Parker and Doc Shaner, who have obviously put a ton of work into this and a lot of thought with an obvious love and appreciation for the source material that comes through onto the reader and it makes you want to just dive into their minds and see what adventures Johnny, Haji, and everyone else in this book is going to go on to next. Without giving away the final reveal because I want you to have that magical experience all by yourself, thank you so much for watching my review of Future Quest number two. Don't forget to come back to the Hanna-Barbera book club for more of my reviews on Future Quest, more of everybody's reviews on all the books coming out. Check out our hangouts that come out 
every month. And if you want to see more of me, Ashley Victoria Robinson, you can head on over to Jawin's channel right here where I do all kinds of geeky videos daily right there. Thank you so much for watching. Future Questers, I know you've got my back and I've got yours. Be safe and make good choices.